Hi everyone, welcome back. This is our first lesson in a couple weeks. Um, we're starting quadratic functions and we're gonna start with um, vertex form. You did a little review of vertex form from grade 10 over these two weeks, so hopefully this will go okay. Um, our learning goals for today are learning to change a quadratic function from standard form to vertex form and determining the vertex of the parabola exact coordinates of the vertex, um, also analyzing the meaning of the vertex in the context of a word problem. We're learning to determine the max or min value of the quadratic function as well, which we also did in that little grade 10 review. So our first question says sketch the function f at x equals x squared plus 4x minus 1 by rewriting it in vertex form. State the vertex, step pattern, maximum or minimum value, and label the axis of symmetry. So if you guys really understood that grade 10 review, you could pause the video for a second, see if you could answer this question, and then resume and see if you did it right. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. So I'm just gonna recopy f of x equals x squared plus four x minus one. That's the standard form of a quadratic function, and we want to change it into vertex form by completing the square. So the number in front of the x squared is a 1, so we don't have to factor it out, which is nice. So to complete the square, we want to, if you remember from our grade 10 video, take half of that number 4, so half of 4, which is 2. So you're thinking to yourself half of 4, which is 2, and then square 2, also 4. So completing the square, we add 4, and that makes a perfect square trinomial. But uh, we can't just add 4 uh, without doing it to both sides, or we could also add 4 and then subtract 4 on the same side, which is adding 0 and then not affecting the value. And then we also have our minus 1. So our first two lines are equivalent. And then these first three terms here, though, that I'm going to put into this box form a perfect square trinomial. And they factor to give you the x part of the vertex. So uh, we take the square root of x squared, which is x, sine from the middle term, square root of the last term, which is 2, square root of 4 is 2, all squared. And then these two terms combined to give you your k. Um, all right, so now it's in vertex form. And we know that the vertex is negative 2, opposite for the x, negative 5, same for the y value. So we can plot that on our graph. So it says, state the vertex we did, step pattern. So our step pattern because the a value is 1, means we go over 1, up 1, over 1, up 3, over 1, up 5, over 1, up 7, if we can fit it, etc. So we've got our up 1. And seven is just off the page. So there's our, there's our vertex step pattern. This one has a minimum value or a lowest value. And that's going to be negative five. So it never gets lower than negative five. And the axis of symmetry, again, is the vertical line here. The mirror line, so if you folded your page along that mirror line, the two sides of the parabola would line up on top of each other. And it's called the axis of symmetry, but its equation would be, in this case, x equals negative 2, because it's like a vertical line that splits the parabola in half. It's our axis of symmetry. All right. So a quadratic function or parabola is said to be in vertex form when it's in the format y equals a, so our step number, x minus h squared plus k, where the vertex is hk, 
and the step number is A. And this is the most graphing friendly format. And we also know that if A is greater than zero, which is another way of saying it's a positive number, so A is positive, you know the quadratic will have a minimum because it opens upward like this. So it will have a minimum value. And if A is negative, the quadratic function has a maximum value because it opens downward and will have a highest point. And the procedure of changing a quadratic function from standard form, which is f at x equals ax squared plus bx plus c, to vertex form, which is f at x equals a x minus h squared plus k, is called completing the square, which we learned in grade 10, and we're going to reinforce in grade 11. But we're also going to do it with a little bit trickier numbers, and that's what's coming up in the rest of this lesson. Okay, so next question. Determine the exact coordinates of the vertex of each quadratic function. Determine the maximum or minimum value of the quadratic function. So just looking at A right now, we already know that there's gonna be a max, and that's because the A value is negative. Okay, so we know it's opening, we know it's gonna be opening downward like that because the A value is negative two but we don't know where the vertex is, so we don't know what that maximum value is. So we have to put it in vertex form. So we did ones like this in our little preview, grade 10 review. When the number in front of the x squared is not a positive one, it has to be factored out. That a value has to be factored out of the terms containing x. So you want to divide mentally negative 2x squared by negative 2, and that gives you x squared and then careful of the sign. Then we want to do positive 8x divided by negative 2, and that's negative 4x. Close your bracket, minus 1. So these two are equivalent. If we expanded the negative 2, we'd get back to the first line. So now we're going to complete the square inside the parentheses. We've got that number four again. So we're thinking to ourselves, half of four is two, two squared is four. So we add four to complete the square, but we have to subtract four so that we're really just adding zero and not affecting the value of our equation. All right, so the first three terms inside the parentheses form that perfect square trinomial. So we can factor it to give us x, sine from the middle term, square root of the last, all squared. And then we have to get the negative 4 out of the parentheses by multiplying it by the number out front, the step number. So negative 2 times negative 4 is positive 8, minus 1. And then we just need to collect positive 8 and negative 1, giving us positive 7. So the question said to determine the exact coordinates of the vertex. So we know the vertex, in this case, its exact coordinates are 2 and 7. And then the max or minimum value. We said it would have a max, and I'm going to predict that it's 7. Let's draw a picture. This is the one we have the graph for. And then my step number being negative 2, means that I'm going to go over 1, down 2, over 1, down 3 times 2, which is 6. Oops, looks confusing. And then over 1, down 5 times 2, which is 10. Okay. So over 1, down 2, over 1, down 6. And our 10 doesn't quite fit. There's our parabola, and we can see that it does indeed have a maximum value, and that its maximum value is 7. Okay? So we can do that without a graph. Um, and you can see already in B here that our question has a fraction. So that's what's new and added on in grade 11. 
And this fraction stuff is important for grade 12 and for calculus. So I'm gonna try to go through slowly and carefully, maybe help you with some calculator tips. And we will complete the square when fractions are involved. So I actually think that when the A number is a fraction, the question's easier than when factoring the A number out develops or creates a fraction. Okay, so this type is actually the easier type, believe it or not. So again, um, we've got an, uh, our A number is being negative two-thirds. One of the reasons we're not drawing it, an A number of negative two-thirds would not be nice to uh, sketch. But we can still use the fact that we know there's going to be a maximum, and the maximum will be that K value when we put it into our text form. So we have to first factor the step number, negative two-thirds, out of the terms containing x. So open my parentheses there. So if I do negative two-thirds x squared and divide by negative two-thirds, the negative two-thirds will just cancel. They're the exact same number. When you divide a number by itself, you get one. So you're going to be left with x squared. But I'm sure you're thinking to yourself, how do I mentally, and um, you might have to do side work for this, How do I divide, mentally, 8x by negative 2 thirds? Okay. So, if you remember, even back to the very beginning of the semester, to divide by a fraction means to multiply by the reciprocal. So, you're thinking 8x, and then times, and then the reciprocal of negative 2 thirds is negative 3 over 2. Just keep the negative with the top number. And that's really over a 1. Multiply the tops together, multiply the bottoms together, reduce. So dividing 8x by negative 2 thirds gives you negative 12x. Close my parentheses, plus 5. So all I did was that first step of factoring out uh, the step number negative 2 thirds from the terms containing x. Okay, but I, I, if I can't do it mentally in my head, 8 divided by negative 2 thirds, then I can come over here and do this side work to figure out that it's negative 12x. Um, also, I want to show you the fraction button. So here's my calculator here. Um, if I know that it's going to, the variable part's going to be an x because I'm doing 8x divided by negative 2 thirds then maybe all I need to know is what 8 divided by negative 2 thirds is, okay? And if your calculator has this A, B over C button here, you can do it on your calculator. So I can go 8 divided by, and then I'm going to use brackets, bracket, negative 2, and then this fraction A, B over C button, divided by 3, closing bracket. So that says they're typed in now 8 divided by negative 2 over 3 equals, and then I see it gives me negative 12. Okay, so let me do that again. So what I'm doing is I'm dividing 8 by negative 2 thirds. Instead of mentally, I'm doing it in my calculator here. 8 divided by, I'm using bracket because it's a fraction that's coming, negative 2, and then this fraction button, A, B over C. 3 equals. So 8 divided by negative 2 thirds is negative 12. And then I also know that it's 8x divided by negative 2 thirds, so it's going to be negative 12x. All right, so now I'm going to complete the square inside the parentheses. So now I'm just thinking to myself, what's half of 12? Okay, so once you get to here, you're thinking half of 12 is 6, and then you square 6, and you get 36. So half of 12 squared. So we add 36, subtract 36, close your parentheses, add 5. And then these first three terms here form the perfect square trinomial. All right, so now if we factor the first three terms, 
perfect square trinomial, so it's going to be x, sine from the middle term, square root of 36 is 6 squared. But now I have to get negative 36 out of the parentheses, and to do that you have to multiply it by the step number. So you can either do, okay, well, I'm going to think about that off to the side here. So there's my first side work, here's my second one. So now I'm thinking I have to multiply negative two-thirds by negative 36 to get the negative 36 out of the parentheses. Okay, and uh, that's going to be 72 over 3, which is 24. So negative 2 thirds times negative 36 is positive 24, and I still need this plus 5. Again, this can be done using your calculator if you have that fraction button. So I'm going to put that under here again. So we're thinking of doing negative 2 over 3, so there's negative 2 thirds, times negative 36 equals and that gives me 24. Okay, so that's now out, now out of the parentheses because I multiplied by the a value, plus 5. And finally, I can get that k value of 29. So determine the exact coordinates of the vertex. The vertex is going to be positive 6, positive 29. And because the a value is negative, we know that it opens downward, so it has a maximum, and the maximum is 29. Okay? All right. Next question. So this is C. All right, now this is one where you create a fraction. I find these ones are more challenging than the ones where you start off with your, when your a value is a fraction, okay? All right, so again, this time our a value is a positive three, so it has to be factored out of the terms containing x. Okay, so three x squared divided by three is just x squared, but then again, come over here, what's x divided by three? Okay, so there's really a 1 out front of the x. So x divided by 3 is really a third x. Okay. So we created a fraction there. Close their parentheses, minus 2. So we've got two equivalent expressions there. All right, so now we have to complete the square, but there's a fraction. So... Again, so what I should be thinking to myself is I want to take half of one third. Okay, so what's half of a third? So think about splitting a third. Do a little picture here. There's a third. Splitting a third in half. So maybe you could see that each one of these would be a sixth. So common sense, half of a third is a sixth, okay? Um, half of a third, when you see of in math, of means multiply, so you can think of it as a half times a third, which is a sixth. Or you can think of it as a third divided by two, or a third divided by two, and then multiply by the reciprocal of two, which is a sixth, okay? So that's just to get us to the half of a third. Again, on our calculator, we could do one third divided by two, and it tells me one sixth, okay? But that's only getting half of it. We also have to think, now that we know that one sixth, we have to square it. And that involves remembering some rules from grade 10 exponents, how you square a fraction. You square the top, so 1 squared 
over 6 squared, which is 1 36. Okay, so that means to complete the square, we have to add 1 36. But we also have to subtract 1 36. Close my parentheses, minus 2. And we've created that now a perfect square trinomial by doing that. And we can factor. So square root of x squared is x, sign from the middle, positive. Square root of 1 36. So if you're thinking square root of 1 over 36, you can think of it as square root of 1 over square root of 36, which is 1 sixth squared. But we have to get the negative 136 out of the parentheses, so it has to get multiplied by 3. Okay, so how do we do that? So 3 times negative 136 reduces to negative 112. And again, you can do that on your calculator if you have that fraction button. So 3 times negative 1 over 36 equals, and you can see that gives you negative 1 12th, minus 2. So now you have to in this case, subtract, negative 1 12, subtract 2, and the way to do that is to get a common denominator. So out of 12 and 1, the common denominator is going to be 12. So I'm going to change 2 to 24 over 12. So minus 1 minus 24 is minus 25 over 12. All right, so if I come over here then, the vertex is going to be negative 1 6, negative 25 over 12. That's the exact coordinates of the vertex. Okay, and neither one of those fractions can be reduced. And we know that it's going to be a minimum value because our a value way up here was positive. So we know that our parabola is opening up, upwards, it's going to have a minimum, and in this case the minimum is going to be negative 25 over 12. Okay, so that one had a lot of thinking involved around fractions, which will probably be what you'll require the most practice on for this part of quadratics. Alright, so our next one, D. Uh, y equals a third x squared minus 2x plus 5. Our a value is positive, so we know we're going to have a minimum value. Factor out that a value from the terms containing x. So negative 2 divided by a third is what we're thinking over here. So do some side work again, or use your calculator. Negative 2x divided by 1 third the same as negative 2x times 3 over 1, which you don't really need, which is negative 6x. Close your parentheses plus 5. Or um, knowing you're going to end in x here, you can do the calculation. Negative 2 divided by 1 over 3 is negative 6. Don't forget the x. All right, so now we're going to complete the square inside the parentheses. So I want to take half of 6, which is 3, and square it. So this is the easier one. Half of 6 is 3. 3 squared is 9. So we add 9, subtract 9 inside the parentheses, plus 5. This part forms our perfect square trinomial.
But now we have to get the negative 9 out of the parentheses, so it's going to have to be multiplied by a third. So let's think about that down here. 1 third times negative 9, top by top, bottom by bottom, reduce, gives you negative 3. Or again, you should be able to do it on your calculator. So 1 third times negative 9, negative 3. One common error I sometimes see in grade 10 and in grade 11 is writing minus 8 here, but remember it's negative 3 plus 5, so it's actually positive 2. All right, so we, we would know our exact coordinates of our vertex are 3, positive 3, 2. We know it's going to have a minimum value of 2, whatever the y coordinate of the vertex is, will be its max or its min. Okay. Okay, so we're finding the exact coordinates of the vertex. We already know it has a maximum because the A value is negative. So we want to factor negative 6 out of the terms containing x. So negative 6x squared divided by negative 6 is x squared. But then we're probably going to think through what's 2x divided by negative 6. Well, that's negative one-third x. Negative two-six reduces to negative one-third. Reducing is good, okay, as soon as you can, if you can. It makes you have nicer, easier numbers to work with. All right, so now that we've factored out the step number, negative six, we can complete the square inside the parentheses. But that mean, means we need to take Half of, half of a third, again, which we now know is a six. So half of a third is one-sixth, okay? Or we can think of doing, again, on our calculator, one-third divided by two tells you is one-sixth, okay? Um, remember, of means multiply there, so half of a third, but then we want to square it. So a sixth squared is 136. So add and subtract that to complete the square. So now you've created your perfect square trinomial. So you're going to have x sine from the middle term minus square root of 1 over 36. So square root of 1 over square root of 36, so that's a sixth, squared. But now we want to get the negative 136 out of the parentheses, so it has to get multiplied by negative 6. So you're thinking negative 6 times negative 1 over 36, which is 6 over 36, but that reduces to 1 sixth. So that's going to be plus 1 sixth minus 3. You can also do it on your calculator, again, with your fraction button. So negative 6, negative 6 times negative 1 over 36 equals, and oops, I get a syntax error there, negative 6 times negative 1 over 36 equals, there we go, shows you positive 1 6 there, like we got. All right, so then we have to combine these by getting a common denominator of 6 in this case. Don't forget the squared, that's what makes it a quadratic there. So our common denominator is going to be 6. So I had to multiply the bottom by 6, top by 6. So that's minus 17 over 6. 
Okay, so our exact vertex is going to be at positive 1, 6, negative 17 over 6. And we know that because the A value is negative, we have a max, which is negative 17 over 6. All right, so we're going to try a couple of word problems. A golfer hits a ball off of a dock into the lake. The function that models the height of the ball in feet above the water t seconds after being hit is h at t, so height at time t is negative five times time squared plus 40 times time plus three. What is the maximum height the ball reaches? So as soon as you see find the maximum or find the minimum, you're thinking to yourself, I have to put it in vertex form, okay? So if you see, find the maximum or the minimum in this unit, it's a cue to tell you to put it into vertex form. All right, so we now know how to do that. And this one looks like it's gonna work out nicely. So we wanna factor the negative five out of the terms containing t in this case. So negative five t squared divided by negative five is t squared. Positive 40t, careful with the sign, divided by negative five is negative eight t. So positive 40t divided by negative five is negative 8t. Close my parentheses, plus three. Okay, now I'm gonna complete the square inside the parentheses. So t squared minus 8t plus blank. So I take half of eight, which is four, and square it. Four squared is 16 but I also have to subtract 16 so that I've just really added zero and I haven't affected the value, just what it looks like. Created my perfect square trinomial. Okay, so factoring this part here, t minus square root of 16 is four all squared but then we wanna get the negative 16 out of the parentheses, so it has to be multiplied by the negative five. So negative five times negative 16 is positive 80. So that's gonna be positive 83. So what is the maximum height the ball reaches? Therefore, max height is 83, check for units, feet. Okay, so if we're kind of thinking about this from a graphical sense, we know that um, this function has a vertex of four and 83. So say this is four and this is 83, and this is height, h of t, and this is time we know that this is the maximum it gets and then it's gonna come up and go down. Okay, so there's a little rough sketch. So when time is four seconds, we know our height is 83 feet. What is the height of the ball two seconds after being hit? Okay, so this question is actually an easy question, it's just a function notation question. So what you kind of have to realize is that they're asking for the height when the time is two seconds. So they're really just asking you, what is height h at two seconds? What's h at two? Well, we know how to do that right from our very first unit. We just replace every t in either of the forms. So we could use vertex form or we could use a standard form whichever we think is easier. I'm gonna use standard form, but it wouldn't matter because these are equivalent forms. So bed mass, do the exponent first. So that's negative 20 plus 80 plus three, and you guys can probably do this on your calculator without that many steps, but I'm just trying to show you how to get it if you're unsure. So um, there we go, therefore, so at two seconds, 
ball is 63 feet high. So that makes sense. It's, four, uh, it's, at, it's at its max at four seconds. So at two seconds, it's going to be lower, which will be 63 feet in this case. How long is the ball in the air? So if we go back up to our diagram, it gets hit, goes up to its maximum, and then it's going to come down, and eventually it's going to hit the ground, and they really want to know what time is that happening at. Okay, what time does it hit the ground? So they're asking for time, um, but we have to infer from this question that when it hits the ground, height is going to be zero. The height above the ground is going to be zero when it hits the ground. So in other words, h at t is going to be zero. So um, we have h at t, so we can either put zero in here and solve for t, like we did in the first chapter using the quadratic formula, or we can put it eight, zero in here for h at t and just use reverse bed mass because we've only got the t in one spot. So we, usually that's easier. So I'm going to write out the vertex form. It doesn't matter if you're a quadratic formula person, then that's fine. So we're trying to find time when height is zero. So now that the t is only in one spot, I can solve using reverse bed mass. So the first thing I would do to both sides is subtract 83. And then the next thing I'm going to do to both sides is divide by negative 5. And I'm going to see if that's um, a perfect decimal or not. So 83 or negative 83. I know two negatives are going to give me a positive. Gives me exactly 16.6. .6. So I'll just use that. Okay, so now the t is being trapped by the squared. How do you undo squared? It's square root, but remember uh, there's two possibilities when you solve a quadratic equation. So we need the plus or minus uh, in front of the square root of 16.6. And then this square root undoes the squared. And then we can add four to both sides. So when we come over here, we've got two possibilities. One is that t is positive four plus the square root of 16.6. .6, and the other possibility is that the time is positive four minus the square root of 16.6. .6. And since this is a word problem, now we can go to our calculator and figure out those possibilities. And one could be inadmissible because we would take time, a negative time to be meaningless in the context of the question. So I'm going to type in my calculator here, 4 plus the square root of 16.6, .6, and that gives me 8 point, approximately 8.1. And then also I can do 4 minus the square root of 16.6, .6, and that's going to give me approximately negative 0.1. 0 0.7 or negative 0 0.1 if we round to one decimal place, but we're going to say that one's inadmissible because we don't want to have a negative time. Okay, so then our solution is going to be then, therefore, the ball is in the air for 8.1 seconds. Okay, last question. The cost C in dollars of operating a ferry boat depends on the speed V in kilometers per hour of the boat according to this function here. So I really like to use diagrams. If I know something's quadratic, we've got the V squared. So 
this is always on my vertical axis. This is cost, C at V, the cost, C in dollars of operating a ferry boat depends on the speed, V, so this is speed here, V. And I know that it's gonna be, I don't know, it's gonna have a vertex somewhere and it's gonna be opening upward because the A number, the two thirds is positive, okay? And we're looking for the speed that's gonna give us the minimum. So this minimize cost means put it in vertex form. So what speed will minimize the cost? All right, so that means we have to put this into vertex form. All right, so that means first thing we would have to do is factor out this A value two thirds from the terms containing V in this case. So two thirds V squared divided by two thirds is just V squared. But then we might have to do some more thinking on how do we do uh, negative 24V divided by 2 thirds? Okay, so we know that we can use the rule multiply, oops, I forgot the V there. Multiply by the reciprocal when you're dividing by a fraction. negative 72v over 2 or negative 36v. Close your parentheses, plus 664. Okay, or again, you can use your calculator and do negative 24 divided by bracket, 2 thirds, 2 thirds, that gives you the negative 36 that you need. And you just have to remember, you still have the V too, because you're dividing negative 24 V by 2 thirds. All right, so now we're gonna complete the square. C at V is 2 thirds V squared minus 36 V plus blank. And then we think what's half of 36? So that's 18 squared, half of 36 squared. So 18 squared is 324. So add 324, subtract 324, close my parentheses, erase this now, sorry, and then plus 664. And then these first three terms in the parentheses form your perfect square trinomial. So I'm going to factor that to give my, me V minus the square root of 324 is 18 squared. But then I have to multiply, so I'm thinking over here to get that out of the brackets, I need to do 2 thirds times negative 324. So I can do 2 thirds times negative 324 gives me negative 216. Still have the plus 664. Or over here, you can do two times negative 324 gives negative 648 divided by three, which gives me my negative 216. Okay, and then I just need to combine these to give me the proper K value. So negative 216 plus 664 is positive 448. So what does that tell me? It tells me that the vertex is going to be positive 18 and positive 448 makes sense we wouldn't want to have a negative speed so over 18 so that means this is 18 and up 448 so this is 448 if we look at our vertex so our minimum cost is 448 448 dollars but that's not what it asks it asks if this what the speed should be to minimize the cost so this is our speed here 18 
and it should give me units kilometers per hour. And you can see that that 18 kilometers per hour is within the zero to 50 given by this domain that's tacked on the end. So if we'd gotten you know, 70, it would be in, in, inadmissible for our vertex, but it fits, fits in there. So we just need to answer the question now. So therefore the boat should travel at 18 kilometers per hour to minimize the cost. Okay, so what you should be able to do, and when you're doing the practice, um, you can kind of test yourself. Can you change the equation of a quadratic function from standard form to vertex form by completing the square? And that's including starting with a fraction or creating a fraction in the process. When a quadratic function is written in vertex form, you can tell what the vertex is. You can tell whether the function has a maximum or minimum value and what that value is. And with quadratic word problems that involve finding maximum or minimum, you know that that means you have to put it in vertex form. And then that making a sketch of the function and labeling the axes, really important, can help you accurately answer the question that's being asked. So for instance, the question we just finished, it asked you for the speed, the 18, and if you'd answered with 448, you would have got the question wrong. You would have done a lot of the procedure right, but you would have actually answered the question incorrectly. So making that sketch can really be helpful. Okay, and that is the end of our lesson. Thanks, guys.